Today, we are looking at more corporate logos and corporate rebrands, and we'll be ranking them from S tier to D tier. Something that people have been asking me to review a lot is the Yelp logo, and specifically the icon that they've rebranded into. The thing that people are mostly hung up on is the gradient. So super trendy, in my eyes, maybe something that's not going to last. But when I look at the things they fixed up, specifically with the stroke, this being an app, like how small this is going to get on a screen. You can kind of already see when we zoom out a little bit, the Yelp is getting really hard to read. So in my eyes, that's one thing that they did right. It being kind of overshadowed by this really unusual gradient almost feels a little bit less elegant, like a little bit less professional, right? Almost corny. I'm going to put it in B tier. They've done some things right with it being more legible. It's easier to read. So functionally, it's an improvement, but visually is maybe a little bit weaker because the trendiness of this gradient that they've added. Next up, we're going to move into some car logos, specifically BMW. This is going to be super controversial because the designer in me knows that this is a more usable mark, but to a lot of people, it might seem like they took the car component out of a logo. I think of a quote from Massimo Vanelli, quoted saying something along the lines of, for typography, I can type out the word dog and it doesn't need to look like a dog. The same way that these logos, they don't need to look like they're on a car. It feels almost a little tight. That's kind of an issue when you translate something from 3D into 2D. The logo has some tension that wasn't originally intended to be there. I still think that it's an improvement, but again, similar to the Yelp logo, I think they took one step forward, one step backward. So I'm also going to put this one in. B tier. So now that we've looked at BMW, I think it's time to look at Nissan, which in my eyes is a less lazy version of a car rebrand. They haven't just traced over the elements of the previous logo. Like BMW, it's basically an exact replica, right? And because of that, when they were in the middle of translating 3D to 2D, some issues came around specifically with the negative space. I like that Nissan, they took an approach where it still feels familiar, but they've improved the 2D version, knowing that this block wasn't gonna work. Nissan being a clear improvement and BMW being kind of just in the middle, I think it makes sense to me to put Nissan in A tier. And obviously we've spoken about the fact of like why they got rid of that metallic look when we were reviewing BMW. Let's talk about CIA. When this was requested for me to review, I almost thought it was a joke. So like the designer in me knows that visually this new one is like, it's designed better. But when we think of the use case of the CIA being like a government entity, and this is like a, like this is what you would imagine the CIA logo to look like in a TV show. It looks like a streetwear brand. So unless the CIA is going in a different direction, I'm going to say CIA is a D tier logo that just doesn't make any sense. Like why, why would they even need to rebrand in the first place? CIA is better designed, but we have to think about the most important part of a logo, which is how it functions and how people see it. So moving into dictionary and thesaurus. So this is kind of a unique case because I felt it needed to have both. This old dictionary thesaurus, in my eyes, doesn't really mean anything, or if it does mean something, it's kind of hard to understand. I think the typography is a lot better. It's easier to read. There's a relationship between the two. It's very clear that it's a book. And when I look at things I would change, there's really nothing there. They feel like they have more personality individually, but as a set, they also work together really well. And obviously this is kind of a weird ranking, but I'm going to put it in S tier because I can't think of what I would want to change about it. Usually you'd expect S tier to be like some famous logo that everybody knows, but like these are kind of, these were like hidden gems, right? Moving into Pepsi, there's so many variations of Pepsi, right? Like it's kind of the same elements, but they change the style or the type a little bit. And I actually remember a lot of people didn't like this new logo, but when I compare the two functionally, I think it works. Depending on your bias of like what kind of style type you like, you might argue that this type is better. But when I look at this, I don't see a relationship between this logo mark and the type. So it's nice that they've done something to relate the two by having it be a little bit more rounded. It feels softer, right? This is obviously all marketing strategy, but in some sense, the new Pepsi logo might even look healthier. I still think it's a great rebrand though. So I'm going to put it in a a tier. I was planning on ranking it poorly, but when I took a second to look at the details that they added to the new logo, 
I realize that most of it is kind of just people talking, saying that they don't like change, but like people don't like change and that's just kind of how things are. Talking next about Domino's, it's basically everything you would want in a rebrand, right? It simplifies the mark, it's still recognizable, so it's similar but different. Obviously, when you zoom out, the new Domino's logo functionally is just way, way better. The typography is so appealing to look at because the O matches with the, the circular nature of the inner parts of the domino, right? The size of the eye here is the same as the size of the dots, which also, it's just, everything feels balanced. Everything feels like this is how it should look. I don't think I would change anything. Even the stroke outline to the domino makes it work in more situations. So just functionally, it is a pristine logo I'm gonna put Domino's in S tier. So moving into Pfizer, the new one's just so much better, right? Especially when you have the color, right? With like the strands, the typography is awesome already. So I really love seeing that they just kept the typography. If it's not broken, don't fix it their brand guidelines. I know that we're supposed to be looking at just the mark, but we have to take a second to appreciate the effort that went into this rebrand with the animation and all of these kind of details they added, like this 3D rendering, so nice. The logo has meaning now, it's been improved, but it's still recognizable as Pfizer because they've kept the typography the same. I'm going to put it also in S tier. Moving into Staples next, a logo that I just don't get. When I initially saw the Staples logo, I was like really impressed with it. Cause like, you know that it's a staple, right? And it feels intentional. Like it feels included putting it into the logo type. They tried to hype it up as much as they could, but watch this with me. What's the, the big reveal? People look excited. The anticipation is building. What's this? Staples? Oh, I love that logo. Wait, what's happening? Okay, the staple. What What's going on? What is that? You can hear people laughing in the background. What is going on? Why is it in space? What does that have to do with staples? Somebody was about to stand up and they changed their mind. <laughs> Super hilarious, so you get a good laugh out of it, but the logo itself doesn't make sense. Unless you were somebody that stood up in that crowd and was, you know, giving it your full attention and applause. I think most people would probably put staples in D tier. So moving into Circle K, a gas station brand, right? I don't know. I don't know if people have like an emotional or nostalgic connection to the old logo, but I think that the old logo has some issues with it. Like this blue outline, super tense. It's like vibrating with the contrast and color. Like the blue outline doesn't look good. This new logo, I've seen the reveal for it, the relationship with the typography and the mark being lined up this way, the circle, or the C in the circle, I should say, and the actual shape of the circle, they're very similar to each other. If I go to the old logo, you can see how tense it is because it goes right up to the edge. I know there's some history behind why they added like this stripe, and I think they were trying to combine a few logos together. I think it looks better, but I don't know if it has a function or purpose. So I'm going to put it in B tier. Moving into Uber, this is kind of what I imagine would be a controversial one, again, based on your preference of like the type that you like. When I was looking at the brand guidelines for it, they wanted it to look more approachable. And if that's their goal, I think the new Uber logo looks more approachable in my eyes too, just based on my love for typography. I think this type feels a little bit more elegant. Like it's not super flashy. There's not a whole lot of things that they're adding to it. I'm a big fan of the typography. Functionally, it doesn't do a whole lot, but visually, just because I like it, I'm going to put it in A tier. The company that worked on this, like they knew what they were doing. And I think that this rebrand was a huge success. Up next, we have Kraft. This is a very interesting rebrand and you can see I have two variations here. If we look at this first one, this is what they originally had for the Kraft logo. The old logo I think is actually really nice. And this new one feels really, really unusual. They just tried to throw everything into this logo. It's got gradients, every possible shape you could think of. It's got the Amazon smile. They changed the typography. You kind of hopefully know where this is going, but we're gonna have to put it in D tier. So many clashing elements. The new Kraft logo, so we reviewed this old one here, and I thought this was kind of a unique case because they went from this logo to this logo, 
And instead of reverting back to the old one, they actually gave it another attempt. They actually did make some nice changes to the new craft logo. So getting rid of the stroke outline, I think is fine. I don't think it added any extra function. Like you can still get the same kind of look, not having it. And it almost feels a little bit more balanced because you're not alternating between like white, red, white, Again, I talked about lowercase typography previously, but basically when you have lowercase, it's easier to read at smaller distances. That's actually a good thing. So you can still barely make out craft when you zoom out this far in the new one that you can't really make out from the old one. So functionally, they're actually going in the right direction. So it having that familiarity to the old logo, but being slightly better, I feel a lot more comfortable putting the new craft logo in A tier, maybe B tier, but I would say B tier would be a neutral logo. So I'm gonna say A tier because it actually has some improvements. It has some redeeming qualities to it, right? Moving into the last logo, we have Animal Planet, which I don't know if any of you grew up with Animal Planet. I didn't even know they rebranded. So I have a lot of bias being that I grew up with this channel way back in the day on TV. The designer in me really loves the new logo. If this was a logo for a brand new like startup company, I think it would be very cool. And I like that they're paying homage to the elephant, which was used in their very first logo, like their original logo. But I think the typography had so much personality and it's another situation where I don't really think it needed to be changed. I know visually this is stronger as a mark, like I can see it being used easily, but I think that when you look at Animal Planet's audience, it feels a little bit too drastic of a change. So I'm actually pretty happy putting this being the first and only logo in C tier. This was streamed on twitch.tv slash noactdesign. I'm live every Saturday. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.